Hey everybody, welcome back. So a couple of weeks ago, I had the family van break down. We ended up getting it fixed and the problem ended up being the throttle body. Uh, now I've worked on a lot of vehicles with the throttle body, the typical tra traditional style, which I'll show you an example of here in a second, one that you're probably more familiar with. Um, but what our van had, which is a Dodge Grand Caravan by the way, it had an electronic throttle body. So after the van got replaced, the component got switched, I decided to tear it open because I thought, well, what's inside these electronic throttle bodies? I understand how the mechanical ones work, but how do these electric ones get the signals that they need and, and how do they operate within the vehicle? So before we tear into the electronic throttle body, let's go out to a truck really quick and take a look at how the traditional one works to give you an idea of what's going on, what the throttle body is. And then we'll come in and we'll tear apart this electric one, uh, which is, is not working properly, um, but it has all the components still there so we can tear into it and we can see exactly what it is that makes this electronic throttle body do what it does. So first, let's go check out the old one, then we'll tear into the new one. Now many of us are probably more familiar with the mechanical throttle body. In a gross oversimplification of the system, a mechanical throttle body, when you press on the gas, that does two things. The first is it allows more fuel or at least the right amount of fuel depending on when it's cold and when it's hot. Uh, for more information on that you can check out the video that I made about a choke and that explains a little bit more about the fuel and air mixture. Uh, but at any rate, a fuel injected car, it knows how much fuel to put in, but it also, a little cable, a metal cable goes up to a flap that opens and closes the flap inside the throttle body. And we'll see that flap here in a second on this Dodge pickup. Uh, so these ones are mostly the case in the older vehicles, although a lot of newer vehicles have this mechanical throttle body too. They're not all electric like the one we're discussing now. So let's take a look at a close up of that little flap and see what that looks like here in this pickup. So as we zoom in, you can see the throttle body, this flap controlled by a cable. Now when I turn that flap, the inside, the flap inside the throttle body is opening and closing. And here with the air filter box removed, we can see that as this opens and closes, as you step on the accelerator panel, it sure enough opens those flaps. Those flaps inside are the same flaps that we see inside the electric throttle body. So with all of this, what's so special about the inside of the electric throttle body? What makes it so different? Well, let's check it out. So now with this electronic throttle body, uh, we can see that the plug-in for it only has six wires, six connection points. So all of the signals that allow this thing to run are only controlled by these six wires. So I've taken the end cover off of it and I immediately see on the inside of the cover is a really complicated looking circuit board and on the other side I see kind of a matching circuit board parallel to it but there's also a big set of gears. Now this set of gears is a gear reduction from a DC motor that's down in the side. This DC motor connected to a device that's measuring its position. A measuring of a position is called an encoder. Uh, we use them a lot for industrial devices, but pretty much any time where we want to know the position of something as it's opening and closing, like with this flap, we can open and close the flap. And as we open and close that flap, you can see the position of that little circuit board inside changing. So when a motor has the ability to get information coming back to it to register its position, they actually call that a servo motor or a servo mechanism. So this is actually driven by a servo motor. So I'll continue tearing this thing apart, but what we're gonna see down inside here, the cylindrical shape on the bottom is actually a motor. So if you were to hear this thing while it's running, which is hard to hear running when there's an engine noise in the background, but if the engine noise could go away and you could hear that throttle pop body opening and closing, you'd hear the whirring sound of a little DC motor inside of it. So let's take a look at the, the combination there that allows this thing to actuate. And then I wanna dig a little bit further into the circuit board because honestly, the mechanical stuff makes sense, but it's that circuit board that really fascinates me there. It's a really cool feature. Uh, but let's keep tearing this thing apart and see if we can figure out what's, what's doing inside as it moves. The inside mechanism is spring loaded. So that means that as the flap opens and closes, a spring is always gonna try and return it to the closed position. This is important because just like on the mechanical setups, a spring will always return it back when you let your foot off the gas pedal. 
that spring is returning it back to a very perfectly calibrated position. That calibrated position is actually a mechanical gap around the disc that allows just the perfect amount of air to flow through when the vehicle is sitting at an idle. Now one of the cool things about having an electric motor and a computer attached to it controlling this whole thing is that with the mechanical system, when you take your foot off the gas, it's completely closed. That's all you get. But with an electric system, a computer-driven system, you have the ability to be able to program it to do whatever you want. So maybe there's certain circumstances when the temperature is a certain value that we can cause that flap to open and close to give us different ratios, and the computer alone is controlling it. This is what they call fly-by-wire. The mechanical system is a cable control, but this fly-by-wire is just a wire connection coming directly from the computer. That's the only thing that's controlling the position of this flap. Unfortunately, that means that if something goes wrong inside the computer system trying to drive this thing, you're going to have to replace the system. Instead of always having a spring and a cable, which the chances of a spring and a cable going bad on your throttle body, pretty slim. There's a lot more that can go wrong here. So let's take a closer look now at these pieces. This is the circuit board discs, really fancy circuit boards, that control the position, that are they're really just reading us back the position, and those wires transfer over to the cable connector so that the computer can read the position of where it's at. So there's two parts here that make the encoder or the position feedback sensor work properly. This part is attached to the rotating disc that's inside that throttle body. So as the throttle body rotates, so does this piece. This piece here, the receiver board, stays perfectly stationary. Now if you see along the side, there's a whole bunch of these little pins. There, there's little holes, they call those vias on a circuit board, where the wires contract from one side to the other. Now in this case, these ones act as contactable switches. So these little copper pads contact the side and brush up against it as it turns. And as they brush up against it, they complete the circuits where these wire traces, these little dots in the middle, are broken. The, the wires don't continue through there. So as the copper pad rotates over the top of one of those, it acts like a closed switch. Now notice here that some of these are at different spacings than the others. That means that as it rotates, some are going to be closed and some are going to be open, and some are going to close sooner than others. This is similar to what they call a veneer scale when you're reading a set of calipers. A veneer scale is something where the pins do not all happen, that these little notches don't all line up at exactly the same intervals, and therefore by reading the position and which sets of them are closed, we know exactly what the position is. So this is a method of what they call an encoder. All these little circuit board traces, this is what's allowing the computer to track exactly what the position, the throttle position, is at. Now, if your mechanic has a computer and they're able to read, they'll have what they call throttle position sensor, and this is the throttle position sensor. This tells exactly where the position of that throttle plate is at any given time. As a final step, I had to take a few liberties in voiding some warranties. In other words, cutting all of the gears inside apart. Now, uh, fortunately, this did, was a bad one, so it was never going to have to go back into the van. Uh, but it's not going back in any vehicle after this. Uh, but I did want to kind of see what the motor looked like inside. So I had to remove the two independent gear trains from that thing, remove the screws, and this is what that motor looks like. So here we can see the connection headers. And, and here's an interesting way uh, that they, they kind of arrange this. So there's two motor, two wires that have to go to the motor. And since it's a spring return, this motor only has to go in one direction, and then it relaxes back the other way. It doesn't have to be driven in both directions. It can only be moved one way, and then the spring pulls it back the other way, so they don't have to reverse the polarity on it. Uh, but on the end cap, there are four pins that stick out that come from the circuit board, that receiver device, that encoder that tells us what position we're at. Those four pins stick into four little holes on this board, and those are what go straight through to the wire contactors on the other side. So now if I pull that off, which is really just contacts for the motor, this is my motor contacts right here. So I've actually scored myself a good 12 volt motor off of this. So that's fun. I probably will pretend that someday I will use a 12 volt motor, but in reality, I probably never will. But it's nice to know that I've got one if I ever do need it. So that's how the electronic throttle body works. It's, it's sent commands by a computer to tell a motor where to go, 
And then an encoder providing us with some feedback on position returns back the current position so that the computer can verify that it was told to go to throttle body open X percent and it did in fact make it to X percent or it needs to continue driving the motor with more voltage to get it there. Over time, those signals can either come corrupted uh, or in some cases there can be oil buildup that just destroys the ability of the vehicle, the, the throttle body, to allow in the right amount of air. Uh, just the electronics can go bad inside that cause it to just wander out of the correct position and it needs to be replaced. So that's just something to keep in mind when you've got a vehicle that has these electronic throttle bodies. Hopefully you never have to tear one apart, but if you've ever been curious what they look like inside, that's kind of my hobby is once I fix something on a car, I take it back home and I cut it apart and figure out what's inside of it. So it's pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I've got a few other videos where I tore some things apart just so that you don't have to, but I hope you learned some cool stuff about what's inside those things that run around in your vehicles and uh, every day in your life that you may just find a little unexpected inside. So hope you enjoyed it as much as I did tearing the thing apart. Have a great day.